Welcome to the famous ASHRR game show. Today, our host is the famous Claudia Kirsch from New York. And our contestants are Dr. Justin Booker from the University of Wisconsin and Dr. Alex Bass from Mayo Clinic Jacksonville. Please give them a warm welcome. It's great to be here, guys. Thanks for having us. Go easy on me. Welcome everyone to the ASHR Game Show. I'm ecstatic to be your host today, and we have two outstanding players. Today we're going to be having Dr. Justin Brooker, who is an assistant professor at the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and Public Health. We also have Dr. Ayla Kwa, who's an assistant professor at the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida. We're thrilled to present this game to you today and hope everyone is staying safe in your own virtual place. So let's get started. Here are today's categories for you gentlemen. Our first category is name that head, neck, and sign and tune. As you can tell, this is the original cat scan, but you'll be able to have to name both the piece of music that I play and, of course, the head and neck finding. Your next category is presidents and head and neck pathology. I don't know if you're aware of this, but head and neck and head and neck pathology and imaging played a critical role. And, of course, we have a big co election coming up, so a very timely topic. Our next one is getting on my cranial nerves. Of course, I hope I don't get on your cranial nerves by the end of this game show, but I hope you enjoy this topic. And then we have name the movie and the associated head and neck malady. So you gotta mm -hmm. name both the movie and the malady. We also have getting ahead and head and neck. So these are one shot guesses. We show you the image, you gotta make the finding. And then lastly, we were supposed to be in Disney World. Unfortunately, we couldn't be there, but we're gonna talk about Disney and disease or Mickey, around, Mickey Mousing around in the head and neck. So there's a head and neck finding in a Disney character, and you gotta name both to get all full credit. So Dr. Alona Schmalfus is gonna be the official scorekeeper. She makes the final say. She can decide if you're right or wrong. Uh, she basically makes all the choices. So be very nice to Dr. Schmalfus because basically she's the boss in this whole thing here. And of course, thank you for playing, and we'll be giving you awards, which we'll figure out later, toward the end. But now, more importantly, um, Dr. Schmalfos will decide um, how it goes. At the very end, you will write down your numbers. We expect you'll tell the truth and maybe text them to Alona so we know how much you're willing to bid at the final Jeopardy. Because we don't have buzzers and we're all virtual, we don't want to be touching things and touching our, you know, touching our face afterwards, we're just going to do it in order, give one person a shot, then the next person go back and forth. So we're going to start first with our first categories here on opening up the board. And uh, Justin, why don't you pick your first category? Okay. Um, how about uh, getting on your nerves for 300? Woo, going bold. Okay. So that's a great story. <laughs> <laughs> what is the name, Justin, of this key finding and which key nerve is at risk? Uh, aberrant reticulavian um, and uh, uh, recurrent laryngeal nerves at risk. So like it's 10. Wow, fantastic start, bold beginning, exactly right. So it's the non-recurrent recurrent laryngeal nerve, which is a branch of the cranial nerve vagus. Normally, as we know, the right recurrent, laryng the right recurrent laryngeal nerve hooks under that subclavian and goes up in that tracheoesophageal groove, as we see here. We know that the left hooks under that aortic groove and transcends, it goes up in that tracheoesophageal groove. However, if you've got an aberrant anatomy, which means that the artery takes a different course, this nerve can have a variable course, and that's really important. We, we tell our surgeons that so they don't end up making up that nerve and a vocal cord palsy. So excellent start. So we'll now move and give uh, Alok Bot a chance to pick your category. Uh, let's, do, uh, let's do getting on your nerves and back. Um, let's go 400. Ooh. Wow, you guys are bold. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, oh, love this case. All right, so this is a 54-year-old male. He complains of vertical diplopia. He compensates by tilting his head and tucking his chin. He's got a decreased size of that right superior oblique muscle, as you see right here. Which nerve is involved, and where is the nerve nucleus located? All right, so it's the trochlear nerve that's involved. Um, the... Where is the nucleus located, right or left? It is on the left side. You guys are nailing this. That's 
lucky job. So the, the tummies are a little hard as we go on, but you guys are kicking here. So this is exactly right. So it's a right trochlear nerve palsy. He had it because of this little tiny meningioma right here. So as the cranial nerve core came around, the tentral incisura, it got dinged by this meningioma. And remember that the nerve decussates, as you correctly did, so it's on the opposite side curving around. Well done, guys. You're, you're starting off to a great start. All right, Justin, back to you. 500, getting on your nerves? No, oh, oh. Justin. <laughs> yeah, he's going for it. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. And oh. a so now it gets a little harder. So you get a chance, and if you blow it, then it goes to ALOC. So what is the <laughs> name of the syndrome? Which key nerves are at risk? Um, this is, uh, so it's, it's a medial uh, medullary infarct. Um, is it Dejerine syndrome? Yeah. I believe it's uh, cranial nerves 9 and 10. Uh, ALOC, agree or disagree? Disagree. Well, Name me all the nerves. You want me to name them now? You have to name all of them. Oh, oh gosh. gosh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's okay. It's okay. It's all no, right. no, no. Abducens, abducens is going to be one of them. Hmm. Okay. Um, uh. Oh, I'm going to say I'm going to have to start the timer. Come on. You can do it. Facial nerve is probably going to be another. No. Oh, <laughs> oh no, no, no. no. The response. Yeah, you guys get a certain amount of time. So, Doc, this is foveal syndrome or medial pontine syndrome, pontine. and it blocks all those right. pontine perforators. You're going to get the cortical spinal, cortical bulbar, the medial lumniscus, the abducens. You got that one. Medial cerebral but you also get five. You get facial anesthesia. You get the six. So, you got that horizontal conjugate palsy, but you get seven. With the facial weakness, and you get eight, uh, you get deafness with the uh, ipsilateral horner. So very tough case. So five hundreds are hard, guys. Just warning. Is there again. partial credit? No, no, that's up to Lona. I got credit for that. All right. It's a close call. So okay, so Ella, we'll go to you now. You get to pick your category. All right. Let's see. Let's let's um let's do getting on your nerves and back. Uh, two hundred. Okay. You guys really like the nerves, huh? Yeah, we oh, love yeah. the nerves. <laughs> cranial nerve, cranial nerve aficionados here. So which two cranial nerves are at risk in features of hepatitis? Uh, so cranial nerve uh, six. Um, yeah. And then which two cranial nerves? So I, I know about six. Uh... Think about the symptoms. I was going to say, so if we have, I'm thinking Brennan Eagle syndrome, so cranial nerve five probably too. Excellent. <laughs> Just in the big time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. Brennan Eagle oh, syndrome. Features <laughs> apex infection causing the triad of superlative otitis media with the ipsilateral paralysis of six, and you get the trigeminal nerve of five. So well done, Alec. Well done. So uh, Justin, your turn. I need, I need, I need points. I need, uh, I need to go, I need to go big. Um, I'm really curious about the Disney one because that just seems really morbid, um, <laughs> right? Like, I feel like we disillusioned. Um, but, uh, let's try Disney disease for 400. Ooh, it's pretty hard. I'm warning you, these get hard. I, I don't plan on getting this right, so. Okay, okay, here you go. Oh, you might get this one. So name the Disney character, the movie, and the disease. So that's Quasimodo from the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Excellent. Great. Um, what was his disease? I don't know. Um, Look at the image here. It's an example. It's not from yeah. Quasimodo, but an example, a representative one. I guess, is this like sphenoid wing dysplasia? Is this like an NF1 type case? Excellent. Okay. And in fact, <laughs> it's been a Nice work. <laughs> I didn't hear that in like bad. the Disney songs. But this is in fact NF1, sphenoid wing dysplasia, from the Hunchback of Notre Dame, Quasimodo. Um, and these are the little children's versions, although it's a quite morbid story. If you actually read what happens, they both die. The actual true novel, but Disney, they live happily ever after. Excellent. Well done. Well done. Okay, so um, who picked uh, that was, now it's a -Lock's turn. That was Justin Wright, so that means I get to go. Let's see. Um, let's do, let's do getting head and head and neck. Um, 300. Let's go right in the middle. Okay. One shot, uh, one shot deal.
gosh, what is a, um, a venal lymphatic malformation? <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to say. Ooh. <laughs> All right, Jessica, you want to try? Oh. <laughs> um, hmm, I guess, uh, is it like a, it, it looks like there's erosion of the um, superorbital notch there, and is it, it looks like a lacrimal gland tumor, maybe carcinoma? Okay, you want to guess what kind of tumor? Um, I guess it's not a lacrimal gland carcinoma. <laughs> <laughs> like a what? Um, uh, I think it needs to be biopsied. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we won't give either one of them this one, but uh, we're going to go to this one. This is an adenoid cystic carcinoma of a lacrimal gland. Okay. Um, these are um, unfortunately very bad tumors, bad players, smaller the gland, the worse it can be. 50% of these malignant, a slow growing wrote a paper on this, so if you wanted to brush up on some of these things, you might want to check the papers, but nobody ever reads them anyway, so it's fine. As my doctor says, no one's reading your papers anyway, mom, so who cares? Okay, so, um, so moving on, we'll go to the next one. Wait, 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 okay. wait. Wait, wait, Claudia. Uh, he had partial uh, correct partial credits. You get partial points for that. That's very generous. So you should be That's very thankful for, for Dr. Uh, Smallford. I'm out of partial credit. Okay, okay. now, okay, partial credit. I'm going to have to my office when I get back okay. to work. Okay, your turn, your turn to get to that. <laughs> uh, oh, my, my turn. Um, Sorry. Uh, Let's try getting ahead 400, because I did Ooh. so well on the last one. Let's Okay, this is a oh, healthy what? old male, that's left sided hearing thing. loss. He's got episodic vertigo, and that's the path to help you out right there. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think you paid attention. Path is super helpful. helpful. Yeah, I, I think that would be very, very helpful for you. Um, so. Start your timer. Yeah, two-way scan, really bright. Uh, is it a. Schwannoma. Ooh, survey says. Ooh. Oh, I know it. Oh, the oh, yeah. <laughs> oh sorry. Oh, uh, okay. Now, Alok, your turn. Oh gosh, <laughs> I'm just going based on location. It doesn't even. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to say like a, an endothelial sac tumor. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, god. <laughs> exactly right. So that's in fact an endothelial sac tumor. And they can present with various, obviously affecting the vestibular system. This one presented with Meniere's disease. So again, these are low-grade adenocarcinomas, can be very aggressive, and they're associated, as we know, with von Hippolau disease, von Hippolindau, and can be bilateral up to 30%. So well done, well done. So Alok, it's your turn to pick. Let's do, let's see here. Let's let's do getting uh, getting a head and head and neck. I'm gonna go bold. I'm gonna get it wrong, but sure. Let's do five five hundred. Wow. Justin, wow. start thinking. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, you get the daily double here. So oh, gosh. a daily double. Okie dokie. Um, how many points do I have? Uh, no, you don't. Yep. You get double right on this now. Oh. You have seven hundred points right now, and Justin has nine hundred. All right. So I guess um. Let's see, I should probably make a wager, right? So let's, let's. Just to make a wager before you see the you case. You have to make a wager, yeah, before you see the case. <laughs> I was going to say, so I already saw the case. So I was like, wait a minute. Like, <laughs> 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 I'm not going to make it a daily double. I'm going to go for like, even though it's, let's, let's do, let's do 100. <laughs> okay. All right. Perfect. So what's your, what's your, I'm going to start your timer. So what do you think this is? I might use one at a fancy dinner. Um, All right, what do you think it is? I have no clue. Okay, so we're gonna give uh, Justin a shot. Oh, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I have, a, I, I'm, 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 I'm cheating because I got one here with me, so. Oh, exactly uh, right. Um, oh. <laughs> through, uh, cochlea extinct state discussion. Fantastic, exactly right. So this is excellent stiffness with a cor okay. cochlea. Very good that you have one next to you. That probably helps you do well on the game show. Uh, you've got the incomplete partition type three. You've got excellent deafness, mixed hearing loss. You've got this classic bulbous appearance to the IEC, the absent lamina carbosa that separates it from that basal chart. You get this corkscrew appearance. 
classic appearance and you get that risk of the increased parallel pressure can cause stapes foot plate fixation leading to that stapes gusher. Excellent job. Um, fantastic. So you, I think you get nice. the double on that was 200. So you guys got the daily double on that. Fantastic. All right. Um, so it's now uh, Justin's turn. Claudia, Claudia, I need some help with the scoring. So we are just giving Justin 200. Yeah. The 500. Oh, no, she oh. got 500. He should get 500 because he did really well on that. I agree. 500. It's up to you. Sure. 500 sounds right. 500 sounds great. Okay, perfect. I think it's 200. <laughs> All right, Justin, you're up. Okay. Uh, how about Disney for 500? Ooh, going bold. Ooh. Name the Disney character, movie, and disease. Ah, so that is King Triton Excellent. from The Little Mermaid. And that is a Triton tumor. Excellent. Well done. Wow. That's, in fact, exactly a Triton tumor. Um, this is a very uncommon, aggressive subtype of tumor. It has all three types of, like, cell lines. That's why we call it Triton, the three. And it's a malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor, which has rhabdomyoblastic differentiation, and it's often in the sinonasal region. This is a case that we published on several years ago, which had some very unique features, classic appearance of a Triton tumor. Well done. That, that's really quite awesome. That gets another. Well, that's a new yeah. Okay, a lock. <laughs> I got an he's, he's taking this. Wrong, though, so. And I'm, and I'm gonna find pawns. Oh, you know what? I wonder so. if that should have come off. 500 should have come off on Disney and Disease, but I don't know why I didn't. Okay. Um, it's Let's interesting. See. I live in Florida, and I do not know the majority of the Disney characters. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> like your turn. <laughs> I'm impressed with with the king. That's that's awesome. <laughs> um, let's let's do let's do um, getting a head and head neck two hundred. Uh, three. I'm sorry. Which number? Two hundred. Two hundred. Okay. So I would call this a um, sphenoid sinus mucosal. Excellent job. And that's exactly what this is. This is a classic sphenoid sinus mucosal, least common form, um, but they can occur in mainly ethmoids. We see them also in other areas, but um, more common up in the frontal. But you can see in the sphenoid, obviously you want to make sure that the vessels aren't encroaching or coming on there. So excellent job. Kind of a straightforward mini case. All right, uh, Justin, your turn. Um, maybe. You need to slow down and give Alec a chance. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, I'm, I, 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 I the, the, the pattern is I get it wrong, so then he can then get it right. And, uh, <laughs> I, I've been, it's, I've been watching a lot of movies in uh, quarantine, so the name of that movie is sort of appealing to me. Okay. Um, but my comprehension isn't very good, so I'm wondering maybe name that movie for 300? You got it. Okay. How hard these are? So this is a classic one. So this syndrome is associated with esophageal dysmotility. That's why it's in the head and neck. Cerebral hypoperfusion, calcium and reduced blood flow, and vasospasm extremities. This movie is a 1967 American prison drama. It stars Paul Newman in a Florida prison camp with a classic line from the warden which says, what we've got here is a failure to communicate. And that line is considered number 11 as one of the most 100 most memorable movie lines. I love this movie. I, I, I have a big Paul Newman crush. So uh, the um, th that's cool hand, Luke. Um, your, the bottom right image you're showing me uh, looks like Raynaud's phenomena with pruning oh, the digital fantastic. arteries and Crest syndrome with these. Nailed it exactly hands. right. Crest syndrome with systemic sclerosis, multi-system, connective tissue disorder, scleroderma, calcinosis, Raynaud's with esophageal dysmotility, they get stereodactically, antilocentasia, they think it's associated with antibodies that go against the little centromere. So well done, excellent job. That's a, that's a, really good job. Oh, Newman, good choice. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, okay. Uh, Alok, your turn, dear. All right, let's do, uh, let's do Disney and Disease 200. Okay. Oh. Oh, this is a nice straightforward one. So name the Disney character, movie, and disease. All right, so the Disney character is going to be uh, Simba from Lion King. He's all grown up. Excellent. Um, and the disease is going to be uh, fibrous dysplasia. And we call this form? 
Um, I'll give it to you, but it's, it has a specific name, which is why they call that. And that's a Lionitis osseiform. So it looks like a. Oh, lion. okay. <laughs> yeah, so excellent job. So this is craniofacial fibrous dysplasia, um, which can be seen with McCune Albright, but the classic Leonidas osseae, I could say, look like a lion. Excellent job. So well done. Very cool. Okie dokie. So, Justin, back to you. Um, let's try movies for 400. Okie dokie. Ah, name the movie. People with a syndrome experience the movie title with a cla classic Albert Hitchcock classic. Uh, this is a, we actually did this. We did intratympanic gadolinium. You can see the delayed MRI shows that non-enhancing kind of endolymphatic space. Um, so the movie is Vertigo and the symptom is Vertigo. And then um, it's just labyrinthitis. Well, exactly. With vertigo, same thing. So you basically get uh, okay. vertigo and lymphatic hydrops from Meniere's. Um, it was just, uh, first uh, described by Prosper Meniere. That's where it got its name, with vertigo of the inner ear. And the hydrops means that pressure of the endolymph is elevated. Uh, you give the GAD, it goes in through there into the perilymph, and if the endolymph is enlarged, you see less contrast going into that space. So the classic findings. So well done. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Alok, your turn. Let's do, um, let's do Disney and Disease 300. Okie dokie. Everyone's avoiding the songs and the presents. <laughs> oh, this is hard. This is a little tricky. So name the Disney character, movie, and the disease. And I'll help point this out, some of the findings here. Notice that you've got an abnormal annual enlargement of the retrieval artery. You see abnormal regularity of the retrieval artery here. You see some change in the associated muscle, but it's uh, along the vessels here. So name the character and the disease. I have never seen this character. You've never I seen the character? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, is it, it's not Lucifer, is it? No, no, no it's not Lucifer, Lucifer's from like Cinderella. Is this no. Alice in Wonderland? I have no idea. <laughs> okay, you, got, you got one thing right there. So Justin, I'll see if you can steal. Well, it's the Cheshire Cat. Okay, good. <laughs> you have that, but all the medical stuff, I don't know. Um, ah, oh, so okay. sorry. So we have a regular retroaris. I don't know. Is this just like... It's got an abnormal kind of uh, like body appearance to the vessel. Some sort of... It's like, like Eller Danlos or something. Oh, wait. Uh, Eshara Cat Syndrome. Yes. Do you know what it is, though? It is? Oh, no. oh it's actually called that? Yes. Oh. <laughs> what do you mean? Can I just, can I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. yeah, you don't get you get partial credit for that. So we'll go to the response. Oh. That, that'll be partial credit. Um, so called Cheshire Cat Syndrome. You got that right. No, it's oh. actually polyaritis nodosa. So this is a classic article, but was actually describing it as the Cheshire Cat Syndrome, um, where you get this rare systemic kind of necrotizing arteritis involving small <coughs> vascular arteries, and they get annual dilatations as we see in the retriever artery here along the muscle wall. So this is the actual regional article where they published this, and this is from Alice in Wonderland, so well done. Uh, you get what? partial credit on that. I don't get That's the connection. Part. Yeah, that goes. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm just acting just A-lock, your turn. All right, let's do, I have to get this one, Disney and Disease 100. All right, <laughs> <laughs> oh, here you go. Go oh, over the like 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 <laughs> Many classics, and then the character, and then the movie, and the disease. Okay, so this is Mrs. Potts from uh, Beauty and the Beast, and this is Potts disease. Excellent. Very <laughs> Yay. Yay, so classic puppy tumor with the sinusitis, complicated by the subgalic collection, subprior osteoabscess, abscess, and osteomyelitis. Usually the frontal sinus can be the mastoid, and you got it, absolutely nailed it with Mrs. Potts from Beauty and the Beast. So well done. All right, so Justin, your turn. Uh, movie for 500. Uh, it's, it's, just, it's just right in the middle there. It's, 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 uh, okay. So yeah. this 1938 British thriller was directed by Hitchcock and it's basically <laughs> his three previous films were actually total flops. However, this one was so successful. It confirmed that he had a future in Hollywood. So name the movie and name the disease. Um, I believe I'm, I'm going to go with the disease is vanishing bone syndrome and or vanishing bone disease. And I guess the movie is the lady vanishes. Oh my God, that is fantastic. So exactly right. Well done. So that's exactly right. The movie is Lady Vanishes, and this the disorder that we have in hand neck is classic Gorham's Vanishing Bone Disease. It's a very rare osteolytic disorder. These are um, 
uh, pictures I have, I've actually had patients who have this, and basically you get this progressive bony resorption, and it gets replaced by this, osteo the osteous matrix gets replaced by vascular lymphatic tissue. Horrible, horrible disorder, but they kind of go together, uh, both vanishing. Excellent job. All right, Alok, your turn. Let's do. How many hours did you spend on quarantine watching movies? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see, we have all the streaming accounts, you know. Just, uh, <laughs> He's got them all, right? <laughs> my prescription three times. Hey, like your turn here. Let's do. Uh, let's. Uh, I'm really worried about those. These first two categories. I don't even know whether I should like even like stumble upon them. Um, let's do. Uh, Let's finish off getting on your nerves and back. Okay, perfect, for 100. Okay, in this genetic disorder, which affects about one out of every 8,500 8, births, there's an alteration in the CDH7 gene. It causes multiple anomalies, including coenal atresia, colobomas, multiple anomalies of the heart, ear, generative tract. Which cranial nerve is often absent in this disorder? Uh, so it's gonna be, It's charge syndrome, right? So let's see. Um, Cranial nerve is missing. Olfactory. Excellent job. In fact, that's right. We said this several years ago. That's one of the major findings for the diagnosis of charge syndrome. Uh, people tend to blow off those olfactory nerves, but they're really important, and it's obviously a midline anomaly. So well done. Excellent job. Okie dokie. So now, uh, Justin, back to you. Um, movies for 200, please. He really likes the movie. I don't know. Okay, so, so, this, um, so this entity can occur after this movie, which was a 1984 mm -hmm. rock music mockumentary, which was a comedy by Rob Reiner, and it spoofed the rock industry. It was deemed culturally significant, so much so that it's actually in the Library of Congress and preserved in the National Film Registry. So name the movie and the disorder. So this is um, intracranial hypotension um, from a lumbar puncture, presumably, and this is Spinal Tap. Yay, nailed that one, exactly right. So post-lumbar puncture syndrome with spontaneous low pressure CSF syndrome, you see the classic MRI sagging brainstem, the venous distension, you see the pachymanagel enhancement, and of course the classic movie, this is Spinal Tap. So well done, excellent on the movies. Okie dokie, um, Alok, your turn. Let's do, um, I know, which one should I do, right? Exactly, I'm really worried about presidents, I'm really worried about name that sign and song, so I don't, <laughs> and movies, I don't watch too many movies. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's take, let's take out getting a head and head neck. Okay, for 100, here we go. So I think this is fibrous dysplasia as well. Excellent, classic, very nicely done. This is fibrous dysplasia, which can look very bizarre on MRI because it's fibrous tissue, but classic ground glass appearance on CT. And um, as we know, it's a developmental disorder, of fibroblast proliferation, maturation, and there's four major disease patterns. We saw melanosia, but you can have monostatic, polystatic, craniofacial cherubism. So well done, excellent. All right, Justin, your turn. Um, I guess we'll take the movies. Take the movies. Take the movies. <laughs> so lonely, you know. Uh, yeah, here's the movie category. Excellent. 100. Here we go. All right. So this 1956 epic western starred Elizabeth Taylor and Rock Hudson and James Dean. And Dean died, but he got a posthumous Oscar. This entity obviously occurs when the pituitary gland produces too much of a specific hormone that leads to frontal bossing, as we see in this patient. I don't know the movie. Um, <laughs> we got this you. is a hundred. I know one hundred, Justin. <laughs> what the heck? Um, I don't know. I, I don't think I can even name like uh, is Rebel Without a Cause. Is that even like a James Dean? <laughs> no, yeah, I don't know. That's not, so think about what you see on here. I see a I see a prolactinoma, pituitary adenoma. Uh, is it? Oh, uh, not prolactinoma. Sorry. Uh, 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 pituitary edema causing, um, oh my gosh, I'm having, I'm having okay. a brain fart right now. <laughs> um, 
Hey, Locke, you want to help Steel? Do you know yeah, the movie? Yeah, please, Tom, play my misery, please. Oh, my God. There's there's no way that I'm going to do the movie. There's no chance. <laughs> is, is it a yeah. small macronomal, or is it a... I think she wants you to say mac, pituti macro had no one. What's another word for macro? Did I didn't say that? Oh. Yeah, what's another word for macro? Giant. Uh, right? I think we'll give it to you. So the movie's giant. <laughs> oh. And this is a giant uh, gigantism. You get acromegaly from um, acro, meaning it's from mega big. So this is a patient who had a um, growth hormone growth hormone with a pituitary macro gamma. So that's tying those two together. So excellent. All right, guys, now we're down to your last couple of categories here. So, um, Alec, is it your turn? I, uh, yeah, I think so, right? Let's, let's do... Um, Go for it. Go for it. Oh, gosh. All right, so let's, let's say... Let's do Presidents and Pathology 500. Whoa, okie dokie. So this president was diagnosed with the same autoimmune disease as his wife, Experts worried that it would affect his decisions. So this is not his picture, but this is the disorder. Name the disorder and the president. And for five bonus points, their dog also had an autoimmune disorder. Can you name what that was? So the disorder is uh, thyroid orbitopathy. Excellent. Um, president diagnosed with same autoimmune disease as his wife. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Let alone the dog. Um, <laughs> think of a president. Think of his wife. Okay. Uh, oh my God. Okay, Justin, you want to see if you get half credit for this for the points? So I did name the president and the the dogs. Yeah. Yes. The, the president and the dog. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, Teddy Roosevelt? <laughs> All right, we'll go to the response. All right, guys, it was your George H. Oh. W. Bush. Oh, our gosh. Our president during the 51st term. He had Graves' disease. Um, it's after the Graves' Irish surgeon. He had a toxic, it's a toxic void of antibody thyroid, stimulating immunoglobulin, um, and you get excess TSH. And their dog, Millie, both he and his wife had Graves, and their dog, Millie, had lupus, just so everybody knows. So kind of interesting. I was just rabies, but <laughs> okay. Okay. Justin, Justin, your turn. Um, wow, um, that was hard. Um, let's just keep going. Presidents for 400. Okay, this president, these are obviously not his films, died from this disorder. And this is actually a case I had, so I, I had an example of it. Um, so, uh, Ronald Reagan. Um, and what's the disorder? Um, I guess it's amyloidosis. Uh, so we're going to have to say that's a definitive. Ooh. Oh, no. <laughs> A-lock. Name, the, name the finding and name the president. And it's not the president's film, it's just you. It's not. <laughs> That'd be hip, all right. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with a... Uh, uh, a, a a squamous cell carcinoma. Ooh, all right. I'm going to have to say. Ooh. So this guy's is a classic. What structure is normal Class here? Is it just epiglottitis? Exactly right. Epiglottitis. Really? And oh, right. Washington died of epiglottitis. For those really? Oh. Yes. Oh. Our founding father, George Washington, died of adult epiglottitis. This painting of him suffering from the epiglottitis on his bedside was commissioned 50 years after his death. It's one of those key presidential factoids, which now you know applies to the head neck. So really key. There you go. Uh, so you I mean, it's complicated. Wait, wait, what was the whole not his movies thing? I'm sorry? Oh, that's not his, film. not his films. Yeah, yeah, those are not his films because he wasn't alive then. So oh, I, not his films. Oh, yeah. I've seen like movie films. So it was like Ronald. <laughs> oh, okay. I like went way off the beaten path there. You know, no, the films are not I there. Failed American that history. An example. I couldn't take your I'm pretty sure I did. Okay. Um, All right. So um, I think it, Justin, it's your turn to pick. Oh gosh. We need uh, to go for the song. They go along um, very well with the movie. Yeah. Is there anything I'm worse than like if if, if the only thing I'm worse at uh, than history is uh, singing? But let's let's do it. How about songs for three hundred? Okay. So I'm gonna play the snippet of music and it will show you this one. So let me play the snippet of music. Uh, 
Um, this is the friend that gets you know, and is, that's Queen. Excellent. Um, and the song under is? Pressure. Under pressure? Or pressure? Fantastic. Exactly right. So this is under pressure. Exactly. This is idiopathic intracranial uh, hypertension wow. pseudo tumor. And basically, you can see this is a classic Queen and David Bowie. Well done. So you got that one. See that? <laughs> Nice. <laughs> okay, Alok, your turn. Let's do um, let's do presidents and pathology three hundred. Oh, going hard. Um, <laughs> this suffered. This president actually suffered from paralysis. He basically, taught himself how to walk again. He had severe sinusitis. People weren't aware of this, and so the person who treated him basically treated him with lots of nasal solutions containing cocaine. It's thought that some of his best speeches were given because he was on cocaine at that time. Unfortunately, he got incredibly elevated blood pressure. And at the time of his death, probably from the use of cocaine treating his nasal passages, um, was 300 systolic. So name, obviously, the finding that you see here, and the president. All right, so this is um, a, a, a hypertensive hemorrhage. Um, the president. The president who taught himself how to walk again was paralyzed. That hit it very well. Hmm. I have no clue. Oh, 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 don't go to that, don't go to that. <laughs> ignore that, ignore that, ignore that. Ah, I'm going back here, don't ignore that, ignore that. Okay, come back here. So uh, back to presence here, there we go, sorry. Okay, so we're gonna go to the response here and uh, we'll give you partial credit for that. So this was actually Franklin Delano Roosevelt. So what was amazing is cocaine was used quite liberally. Um, he's a unique president because he had multiple terms, considered one of the greatest presidents. He was paralyzed at age 39. Um, they believe many people thought it was polio, but in retrospect, they thought it might be Guillain-Barre. And he also had severe sinusitis and bronchitis. He was uh, treated quite a bit with cocaine in the nasal passages. Um, and he has some fantastic quotes, as we know. He said, you know, that government organized by money is just as dangerous as government organized by the mob. Uh, another favorite one is a conservative is a man with two perfectly good feet, legs. He was never learned to walk forward. And probably the most important, the test of our progress is not whether we add more abundance to those who have much, is whether we provide for those who have too little. So he was a very unique and Im impressive uh, and present. So um, unfortunately, they think the speech, the, the day that will live in infamy, uh, was probably he was on cocaine, they thought at the time. So that's a, a true factoid. Okie dokie. Um, just, uh, yeah, look, did you just pick? Justin, was, it's uh, Justin's turn. Yeah, Justin's turn. All right, I'm going to go a little bolder. Songs for 400. Okay. <laughs> oh, Whoa. Okay, this one's good. Okay, there's a major clue right there. Major. Is it just a, uh, it looks like a counter sinus lesion, I don't know. Um, is it just a counter sinus uh, meningeal, or uh, no, um, thrombosis, I don't know. I, I can't write, really, I'm not really sure what I'm looking at, to be honest. Okay, pretty hard. Okay, I know it's tricky, but tie it together. Uh, Alok, you want to try to steal? Steal it. Um, uh, the lesion, I think, is a partially thrombosed uh, uh, aneurysm. Can we say same? Perfect. Oh. Okay, uh. great. And so the song was. I have no idea the song. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll have to show you guys the answer to this one because it's so good. This was double vision. This was a compression of the cranial nerve six by an ICA aneurysm. You can see the uh, denervation atrophy of the cranial nerve six immediately deviated globe here. And that was Foreigner with a classic song, Double Vision. So a diplopia song. There you go. 
So <laughs> Justin's looking at this going, what are they? And like, I see Justin's face in awe. Like, what are they talking about? I, All right, yeah. Alok, Alok, I know, I'm, I'm pretty sure you are going to revoke my, my, my license. I'm just making other partial credit now for these, like, name that sign and song. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ilona, please be gentle. <laughs> Uh, let's do, um, let's do Presence in Pathology 200. Okie dokie. All right. Seven years after leaving office, this U.S. president complained of a sore throat when he was eating peaches. His disease was believed to have been contributed to by many gifts, up to 10,000 of them, which were sent to him to enjoy. So name the president, the disease, and the gift. And this is a, obviously not the picture of the president's disease, but this is the disorder that he had. So, so the disease is a squamous cell carcinoma with metastatic um, uh, ventinopathy. Excellent. Um, seven years after leaving office, sore throat, eating pages, the disease. So he's somewhere from Georgia. Um, no, does the Georgia think he's got a red herring? The disease was really Wow, all right. I'm going to start the timer, and then Justin, can you steal on the present? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think right. they're gifts. I don't guess. But... Okay, so this is a really good one, guys. This is key. So we open up that box. Cigars. That was a bunch of cigars. Yeah. That's right. So if we look at this picture, we can see that Ulysses Grant, after winning the Battle of Fort Donaldson, during the Civil War was depicted smoking a cigar in battle. So people in the North sent him over 10,000 cigars, and he normally wow. wasn't a big smoker, but he felt like he had to use them up. Seven years after he left office, he had a large uh, tonsillar carcinoma. They basically didn't know how to treat it again. They used salt water. He gargled low potash and, and cocaine, top of cocaine again. Didn't work. And then, interestingly, here's what's really fascinating about Grant. Months uh, prior to the discovery, he was part of a Wall Street firm, and this guy, Ward, was a complete fraud. He was like the Bernie Madoff of his day. And Grant was the chief victim of it. He, so he lost a lot of money. And so he basically sold all of his war trophies to try to pay off the debt. He was in debt. He was basically broke at the time. Mark Twain, who was a good friend, persuaded him to write his memoirs. And he completed those literally three days before he died. And this is the actual photo of him three days before he died. And these are little statues in the towel because he was caught in a flood and all this stuff from his cancer. And the, the action of being a tremendous success, and then his family was no longer in debt from that. So really fascinating history of Ulysses S. Grant. So for those who are history buffs. And there's a, articles about these in Oligology and the Royal Society of Medicine. So really quite fascinating. Okie dokie. So, um, before we move on, I have a question. Did he get a low-dose chest CT? Uh, they weren't around at that time. <laughs> I could have. <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, all right. Uh, whose turn is it now? Mm. Uh, who just picked last time? That was Alec. Is it your turn? I don't remember. I don't remember. Who was it? Is it my turn? Yeah. I think it's my turn. Justin, oh. okay, Justin you go ahead. Justin, you go ahead. Okay. Um, song for 200. Okay. You said it was. Remember, you got to play the. Uh, got to name the disorder on the song. And the song, I guess, is Inside Out. Exactly right. Very good. Oh. <laughs> Very good. Oh, Excellent job. Great guess. <laughs> yeah. yes. Supreme papilloma, positive appearance, right? There. The respiratory epithelium is enclosed by the basement membrane. It grows into that subjacent stroma. You get that inverted pattern. And of course, the song is Inside Out from Phil, Jock and, uh, Phil Collins' uh, No Jacket Required album. So well done. Well done. Okay, so uh, Alec, it's your turn. Let's do, let's do Name That Sign and Song 500. Oh, bold. Very bold. <laughs> okay. I mean Go bold, on. but let's... <laughs> I love this one. I'm looking for a hard-headed one The one who will take me for myself And 
And if I find my hard-headed woman I won't eat nobody else Okay, name me that song and name me the disorder. I have no idea on the song. Um, <laughs> disorder. <laughs> the lyrics. Okay, yeah. I, hope so. <laughs> I don't have an idea for the disorder either, actually. <laughs> okay. Justin, you want to try to steal? Uh, I'm guessing the song is Hard Headed Woman. It sounded like Cat Stevens. Yes. Yeah, exactly uh, right. And the disorder. <laughs> and well, some sort of metabolic bone disease, cover expansion. Um, I would maybe be worried about like a thalassemia or something or. Good. We'll give you partial credit for that. Um, that was actually, so it's osteoporosis. This is uh, Albert Schweinberg okay. disease. <laughs> genetic disorder, right? There's two different types, infantile and the benign, autosomal dominant. Um, it's, uh, they get this osteoclastic, they have a, de a deficit in the osteoclastic resorption, and they can get fractures, and you can see the stick and marrow. And this is a classic song of a hard-headed woman by Cat Stevens, who later on changed his name. But a classic hard-headed appearance here. Excellent. All right, so that leaves us with just uh, stop, a stop, stop. Stop, Claudia. Just for the song, he deserves a full point. I mean, I think so. Yeah, that's true. lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So uh, I think Alec is whose turn is it now? Alec, your turn. Uh, no, it's Justin, right? Because oh, he, he stole your from turn. me. Justin, yeah, yeah, yeah. Justin, your oh, turn. um, presidents one hundred. You got it. Ooh. Okay, this president is the only one who served two non-consecutive terms in office. A doctor looked into his mouth and said, wow, that's a bad-looking tenant in there. I would have it evicted immediately. He did so on a secret trip on a friend's yacht because of the economic turmoil in the country at the time. Now, this is not the president's picture, but it's a representative one I found on the internet. Name the tumor in the president, and this picture is just to show you an example of what this was that he had. Um... I feel like this is one of those things that we're probably all supposed to know to non-consecutive terms in office. I don't know. Um, Go for the disease first. Yes, yeah, do the disease. See if you can get the disease. I, 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 the, this looks like a, um, like a carcinoma, like a, maybe like a minor salivary gland carcinoma or a squamous cell carcinoma. Okay, so of the big palate. carcinoma. Exactly right. Um, um, Alok, do you want to try to steal for the president? Uh, I'm going to guess Harrison because I think it's a president. <laughs> I <don't know> <laughs> this is what's going to Like, how much do we know about our American history? Alok, how about you? It was so long ago. Um, you know what? I'll show you here. I'll show you the answer because I think it's tough. Okie dokie. So, this was actually President Grover Cleveland. So, he wow. interestingly had a big Bruchus carcinoma of the palate. Um, he knew if it wasn't removed, he would die. It was no time, however, because it was really bad. This is in 1893. There was a panic economically at that time. Um, there was major economic turmoil. People, businesses were closing. Americans were struggling. And he was afraid that if people found out he was sick, it would really throw a trigger of financial panic on Wall Street. So in order to treat this, he did something quite crazy. He had only one option. He had a secret removal. So he basically aborted a yacht, the Oneida, and they took a fishing trip off Long Island Sound. This is all true. Um, the surgery was done, and it couldn't leave a visible scar. So they did it intraorally, and they aborted the yacht. They moved it while on a moving yacht at this time, and it was extracted under ether, and it basically left his total uh, mustache, so nobody knew he had the surgery. And this is the actual uh, images from where they did the surgical resection. So it was an unprecedented achievement, actually, in imaging, and well, not imaging, we weren't around to take uh, CTs at the time, but the surgeons at that time was pretty impress impressive, and it was kept a secret for the country for about two decades. 25 years later, one of the oral surgeons actually uh, showed what was going on, and it was truly a remarkable uh, head and neck surgery at the time. There's a really nice article about this in the American College of Surgeons, and this is the actual picture of the yacht where they removed the tumor, and this is the actual diagram of the tumor, and they removed, he used to chew on cigars, and it was where the cigars would hit that portion of his uh, palate, so it was a big Baruchus uh, carcinoma. So we've uh, lost one of our players, but hopefully he comes back on board with us. Um, so we'll come back again. Give him a second, he's uh, logging back in. Uh, this is very, very interesting. So they were really advanced in resection in the 1900s, late 1900s. That's amazing. 
it's truly remarkable because you think about the time that this was going on and on a boat, on a moving boat, which is pretty impressive. So it was done stealth and nobody knew about it till much, much year, uh, later. So kind of an incredible uh, part of American history that we should be aware of as part of head neck radiologists. So uh, we have one last for that name, that song. We'll, we'll wait for our, our colleague to come back on. He's jumping on, I hope. Okay, so who's the last final one for the before we do the final Jeopardy? Who's up last? I think Alok, are you up last? Yes. Um, I think so. Let's do it. I think one last choice before we do the final Jeopardy. So here we go. Okay, so let's go back. We're going to go back to our last name that song. Okay, Alok, here you go. Here's your here's your sound piece. What is Eagle Syndrome? Nice. Excellent. And? Uh, the song. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh. Who's the band? Who's the band? The, uh, the, the Eagles. Excellent. Yay. <laughs> well, the song is actually not the Eagles. That's not the band. But it's actually, I want to fly like an eagle, but we'll give it to you because that's like you were doing so well. So anyway, it's Eagle Syndrome. <laughs> so Eagle Syndrome, it was described by uh, W. Eagle 1937. Uh, pain is associated with an elongated styloid, especially when the head is turned. Um, with the classic eagles, you can have potential hyoid involvement, posterior displaced. And the actually of the band was Steve Miller Band with the classic fly like an eagle. But we'll give you credit for, for trying, at least coming up with the eagles. We could have put the eagles, but that would have been in the band. So I kind of led you down, down the false path there. All right, guys, so we're now up for a final Jeopardy. Uh, I would suggest you figure out, uh, Lona, how many points does uh, Justin Brooker and does ALOC bot have? Justin has 4,750. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and I has 2,200. All right, guys, so text the amount that you're going to uh, give to Lona so she has that number so we know what that is and we'll reveal at the end before we do our final Jeopardy question. All right, Alona will have those numbers, so she's good to go. Yeah, I'm waiting. Okay, you sent your numbers of uh, points you're willing to bet? Excellent. All right, here we go. Final Jeopardy. Ready for the, we're in a Mickey Mouse kind of situation here, so here we go. Name the disease. The Disney character involved and the second key sign and the original name of the disease. And I will put the Jeopardy music on while you guys have a little moment to think about this. Do we give it to Alana or? Um, you can, uh, I, I think you, I don't know if you write it or say it out loud, right? Do they, I think you have to yeah. type. I text text to we should text, te yeah. we should text, yeah. Yeah, text oh, it to Alana. Text it um, to Justin, I did not get your text by the way. You did? Oh. Oh, um, no, I do from Alog. <laughs> <laughs> How about? So, well, every, audiences, you too can play oh, at no. home. See if you can come up with the Disney character involved, the second key sign, and the original name of this disease. The thinking, you can see the hard concentration. Justin and Alok are doing amazing. I'm going to start the timer, gentlemen. We'll give you one more chance as we play through our theme song. Here we go. Alana, theme did you get my, um, my message? Okay, text it to Alona. Alona, did you have yeah, your I answers? I'm Justin, so I would be good. Okay, Alok, send your answer in, please, to Alona. Yes. All right, gentlemen, so let's see what those answers were, Alona. Can we read out Justin's answer? Justin's answer is progressive supranuclear palsy. Excellent. Oh. And mouse. Excellent. And the second key sign, did he get that? Second key sign? He, uh, the second key sign, there's another sign involved. Um, but that's okay. You got part of it there. And what's the original name of the disease? Did you put that down? It's not included. 
Ah, I'm going to play the Jeopardy thing one more time. See if you guys can come up with that, because that is part of the key question to get all the points. So here we go. Gentlemen, I need to get the second key sign, which is shown here, and the name of the disease. Please send it immediately to Alona. Audience, you can play at home. Excellent. Okay, Alona, will we have their answers? <laughs> <laughs> so Justin added narrow medulla to it. Okay, uh -huh. and the original name of the disease? Is that uh, called progressive supernuclear Oh, we're going to see what uh, ALOC's answer is. ALOC, what was ALOC's answer? I drew a blank. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we're going to go to the answers here. So, uh, <laughs> we'll have to say I don't have to do the, the emojis about. <laughs> so we're going to go to the answers. This is indeed the classic appearance of the hummingbird sign seen here oh. in progressive supernatural policy. <laughs> and this is the classic Mickey Mouse ears, which is our Mickey Mouse character. And the original true name is Steele Richardson Olszewski syndrome. So that's what we were looking for. The Mickey Mouse sign refers to that axial MRI in the brainstem showing that selective atrophy of the midbrain pigmentum with relative sparing of the midbrain tectum and cerebral giving that Mickey Mouse key symbol. So Alona, do we have their final points that they um, were willing to put up for the final Jeopardy and the final scores, please? So since none of them won, uh, <laughs> well, I thought in, in flattened uh, midbrain. I, I wasn't. I didn't know you. Were... <laughs> you got partial credit. You got partial credit on this. So. <laughs> I think partial credit. Okay, how much? Uh, how much did you bet? Two thousand five hundred. So half of that. So you got about half of it right. So that's okay. fair. And how much did Alok <laughs> bet? So he was at, at six thousand points. Alex bet zero. <laughs> <laughs> See, I know Justin very well. I know Justin very well because I knew that he would have done half. So. <laughs> okay, exactly. And so, and so, what was Alex's final score? <laughs> so Justin has six thousand, and oh, Alex the decimated. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you guys very much. That was outstanding, and thank you so much for participating and everyone for listening to this and we hope you enjoyed this hopefully educational session making rousing around in the head and neck and alona thank you for being our wonderful scorekeeper and for our, of course our team of letty and her fantastic uh, audiovisual team for keeping us on track thanks everyone and stay safe stay safe bye yeah. and thank you everybody <laughs>